talking about demons. What are the demons? The voices. Well, tell me about. It. What are the voices about? It's, it's one. It's another voice. The evil side. Well, what does it tell you to do? Burn, kill, destroy. Okay, burn, kill, destroy what? Anything. Anything. It was Valentine's Day, 2018, when a shooter entered Stoneman Douglas High School. After storming the halls, 17 people were murdered, another 17 were left injured, and nearly everyone experienced emotional trauma from the incident. To date, this has been the deadliest high school shooting in U.S. history. The shooter, Nicholas Cruz, tried to escape the scene by blending in with the crowd of the students. Upon being captured, he started talking about how he saw demons and heard voices. Also, that he didn't know where he was or what he had done. Now, it's the job of the interrogator to decide if Nicholas Cruz is a mentally ill individual who needs help or if he was fully aware of his own actions. Nicholas Cruz was brought into the room seeming to be disassociated from reality, maybe even regretful. But as soon as the guards leave, Nicholas looks up at one of the cameras and starts to pretend to shoot himself. Even if Nicholas were feeling suicidal, this change of behavior from quiet to active in a matter of seconds is abnormal. When people fake a diagnosis, they will often act in extreme ways to try and convince people that they have such a diagnosis. For example, if you give people with memory loss a coin to flip, then take the coin away, they will only be able to guess which side their coin landed on 50% of the time. But people faking memory loss will purposefully get the answer wrong, far more than 50%, to try and convince people of their diagnosis. Nicholas seems to be doing that here, overacting to convince the detectives about his diagnosis, since that is the only thing he can do to get out of a prison sentence. All right, how you doing, Nick? You all right? Got to be able to speak so I can hear you. Nicholas Cruz has returned to being quiet in the presence of people. Remember, he looked directly at the camera when the officers left. He knew he was being watched the whole time. So his behavior shouldn't be any different when the detectives enter the room. He's pretending he didn't know they were watching him to make his diagnosis seem convincing. We can already see strong evidence that Nicholas is faking his diagnosis, but it will take something more conclusive to determine this for sure. All right, I just need to ask you, really, your name and date of birth, just to confirm I got it right, and then I'm going to see if you want a glass of water or something. What's your first name? Come on, Nick. <laughs> Huh? Spell it for me. N-I-K. Come on, I'm, I'm old. You got to talk so I can hear you. N-I-K. O. L. Okay. A-S. A-S. And what's your middle name? Jacob. Come on, man. Speak so I can hear you. Jacob. Jacob. J-A-C-O-B. Yes. And what's your last name? Cruz. Cruz. Okay, again, man, uh, unless you want me to sit in your lap because you're talking so quiet, you're going to have to speak so I can hear you. Let's, let's get a little closer to the table so me and you can communicate. What's your date of birth? The detective is going to have to work hard to get Nicholas to open up. He's starting by getting Nicholas to answer some warm-up questions, like his name and birthday. 
But Nicholas remains cold and quiet, taking a silent approach throughout the interrogation. 19 years old, where were you born, what city? I don't know. You don't know, you know what state? Florida. Florida? Have you lived down here your whole life? Yes. Okay. But you don't know what city? You don't know what hospital? Okay. Again, after people have left, Nicholas almost immediately oh, fixates no. on the camera, showing his level of awareness of his situation and how he's always oh, no. being watched. Nicholas motions to shoot himself in the head while staring directly at the camera, as though he's trying to convince anyone watching that he is suicidal. If Nicholas's state of mind were genuine, there would be more consistency in how he behaves in front of a camera and with the detective. The fact that he can change so quickly, strongly suggests he is being performative. And again, Nicholas is conducting self-harm by picking at his skin and biting himself, behaviors that we'll see vanish as soon as the detective returns. All right. If there's not the bleeding anymore, you want them off, we can pull them off. I'll get you a garbage can. You want them off? Put them on the corner. Throw them on the floor in the corner. The detective gave just a normal reaction to Nicholas peeling off his band-aids and picking at his wounds. Nicholas is only acting in this way to garner sympathy from the detective. By showing that he isn't going to react to Nicholas's self-harm, the detective is deterring Nicholas from using these tactics just to get a reaction. Are you staying with a family member or a friend? Come on, you gotta relax, man. Do you know what city you were living in in the last, say, week or two? How long have you been living with your friend? Four months. Four months. Okay, I gotta take notes because I'm old. What's your friend's name? I, I can't remember. You can't remember? You know him from where? School. Okay, and the school you know him from, again, some of these questions are gonna sound stupid. But I need to know, what school do you know him from? From Douglas? Yes. Okay. What what name do you call him by? Brother. Brother? Is that where you stayed last night at his house? I can't remember. Saying, I don't remember, is a common way to avoid answering questions, even when we do know the answer to them. Nicholas is only being asked about where he was staying the night before, something he should know very easily, and his refusal to answer shows how defensive he is. You can't remember. Okay. Can't remember anything. What about your phone? Do you have a phone? I lost it. When did you lose it? Today. Today? Okay, and what kind of phone is it? I don't know. Okay, is it a flip top, an iPhone, a, a uh, Samsung? It's a phone. It's a phone. What's the number? I can't remember. Okay. I can't remember. Nick, like I said, the questions are going to get a lot more difficult than I what can't your remember, phone dude. Okay, but where, when. I can't remember, dude. I can't. Okay, Nick. Nick, calm down. You've already been medically cleared. I know what's going to be talked about is difficult, but again, you don't remember your phone number. How long you had the phone? Nicholas is now faking a panic attack to avoid answering the questions. We can tell it's fake because there was nothing to trigger Nicholas. He was just being asked his phone number. It's the same thing as the faking memory loss example. Nicholas is overreacting this way to try and convince people of his diagnosis. How long have you had the phone? Nick, the doctor's already looked at you. Okay. Okay, you're fine. You're not having any problems at the moment and you're perfectly fine. 
So calm your breathing down. All right. And and I want to believe certain things that you're going to tell me, but you know, if we're getting to where you're going to hyperventilate over a phone number. Okay. All right. All right. Look. Again, you have to understand. We're going to talk about some things here, and I know what happened today is hard. I understand what happened to your parents is hard. But the only way for you to make me understand is for you to be able to talk to me and tell me about this. Okay? All right, because, uh, you know, I can talk to all the people in the world, and I can watch all the videos in the world, but I only can talk to you to hear from you what was going on with you. Okay? Whenever a subject is being interrogated, no matter how heinous the crime is, the detective needs to make the subject feel like they have a safe space where they can open up. All right, let's talk about your background. You went to Douglas. How far did you go in school? And what grade did you graduate? It's, huh? It's, I started four years ago there. You do any kind of drugs? What kind of drugs do you do? Xanax. Xanax? Marijuana. Marijuana. What else? I tried killing myself with ibuprofen and. Okay, when was that? Bill. When did you try killing yourself? Two months ago. Is that the only time you ever tried to kill yourself? No. Okay, what other time did you try to kill yourself? I tried. I tried. What was it, what was it called? Uh, I drank a lot. Drinking too much alcohol, I guess. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Alcohol poisoning? When was that? A couple years back. A couple of years ago? So it was yeah. before your mom passed? Yes. The ibuprofen was after your mom passed? Yes. The detective has gotten Nicholas to the point where he's more open, to the point that he's willingly giving details about his past. This means the detective should be able to proceed with asking questions about the incident. Now, three years ago when you went to... To Douglas, and obviously you stopped going there. Why'd you stop going there? My depression worsened. Your depression worsened, and what what was going on? Was they, you know, did you just stop school on your own, or did some incident happen where? Yes, some incident. Well, what was the incident that happened? Fought a kid. You fought a kid. You remember the kid's name? Ian Shingle. What were you guys fighting over? A girl. A girl. Now you said you didn't have a lot of friends when you were at school. Who who was the girl? What was what was what was her name? Emily. Emily. Was she his girlfriend? Your girlfriend? My girlfriend. Your girlfriend? Did there come a point in time where you just stopped going there, or they expelled you? Or I just stopped going, and then transferred me. They transferred you. When they transferred you, that that was that upsetting to you? Yeah. Okay. Did when you got transferred. Were you still going out with Emily? Stop talking. And you and you're talking about demons. What are the demons? The voices. Well, tell me about. Them. What are the voices about? It's, it's one. It's another voice. The evil side. Did you ever tell anybody about the voice? Never. And what does the voice say to you? Well, what does it tell you to do? Burn, kill, destroy. Okay. Burn, kill, destroy. What? Anything. Okay. But have you ever burned, killed, or destroyed anything? What have you burned, killed, or destroyed? Burned, just fire, set fire. To to in what? Pit. In the pit, fire. Oh, a fire pit. Okay. Well, I mean, the voice told you to burn something. You built built a fire. What else did the voice tell you to do? That's kill animals. Okay. Have you ever killed animals? Yes. What kind of animals? Birds. Let's talk about the last couple of days. When was the last time you heard the voice? Yesterday. And what time was it yesterday? It was at night. And what's the voice telling you? To hurt people. To hurt people. So what happens? Is that, do you hear the voice this morning or no? Hey, what, what, what's the voice saying this morning? Okay, let's talk about it. Did the, voice, the voice didn't tell you to take Uber, right? Yes, it did. It did? Yes. The voice said take Uber. Yes. The, did voice, the, vo the voice is, is in me. You're the voice. There's, there's the, in here. Okay, it's in your head. Yes. What is it? A male voice or a female voice? Male. Male. Can you tell how old the voice is? My age. I mean, look. Everybody it's, has. Everybody. It's, it's every, me. It's me and then my bad side. 
I understand. Everybody's got a quote, good and bad side. There's people. No, it's, it's, it's a voice. The voice isn't here. And then it's me. It's just regular me. Just trying to be a person. The voice didn't force you to do anything, right? No, the voice did. It's two voices. Uh -huh. it, it, there's one half that's the good and then the bad. You're not a psychologist or anything? Or? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm a 59-year-old man who's raised three children. So I guess that makes me somewhat of a psychologist. I think you can give me a psychologist here. Uh, I can certainly ask. At the end, you're nothing but worthless shit, dude. You deserve to die. Because you're fucking worthless. And you're fucking pissed off everyone. Some stuff here. You with the water? Will you put it back over here? You definitely don't want the water, huh? All right, the schools or the psychologist you want to talk to. Obviously, I would have to tell him what you want to talk to him about. So, what exactly do you? What do you want me to ask him, or what, why do you want to talk to a psychologist? Find out what's wrong with me. So, how many years about do you think you've been hearing these voices? Fifteen years. Fifteen? I don't know. Does that sound right? No, because fifteen on top of five, we would be 2020. Do you, when you hear the voices, are the voices like outside your head or inside your head when you hear them? Inside. Okay, so it's not like... You don't hear a voice from that corner talking to you. It's inside your head. And is it always the, the same voice, or is it only one voice? One voice, same. I try to, I try to control it, but. Well, how do you, how do you control it when, when you try, hear it? Try to be moving. Okay, so if you're sitting still, you hear the voice more than if you're moving. I mean, you talk about physically moving. Yeah, physically moving. Do you always obey what the voice tells you to do? I try not to. Now you talked about demons, yeah. and then you talk about the voice. Yeah, that's voice. a demon. That, the voice is the demon. The voice is the demon. So there's the, not the two. The person, whoever it is. Does it have a name? No name. When you wouldn't listen to what the voice said, you ever think that something bad would happen to you from the voice for not listening to it? Loneliness. Huh? Loneliness. Loneliness. So the voice. Listening to the voice was going to keep you from being lonely? Yes. So the, your loneliness is fulfilled by the voice. So he's kind of like an imaginary friend. Almost. Yes. Almost. Yes. So why do you want to be friends with somebody who just wants to tell you to do bad things? That's like being around a friend who's always getting you in trouble. Why would you want a friend like that? Because I have no one. Did the voice tell you to buy that AR-15? Yes. Did it tell you, hey, buy that gun, it looks cool? Do you know what the Mississippian Guardian is? What's that? I don't know, I'm just asking. Some was posted under the username of Nicholas Cruz on the internet. And it said, I'm going to be a professional school shooter. Yeah, really? Yeah. Was that you who posted that? No. Wait, did you said Missouri? Nicholas quickly asks if he said Missouri instead of Mississippi. He appears to be purposefully getting this detail wrong to convince the detective that he doesn't know what it is, despite his name being right on the post. No, I'm just saying, it said maybe something towards like Mississippi or Mississippi? Ever been to Mississippi? I don't know. He's, he's looking on that because on... On the internet, somebody posted under your name, Nicholas Cruz, which, you know, is a somewhat common name, I guess. There's probably more than one of you out there. I'm going to be a professional school shooter, and it was posted 
Mm -hmm. It was posted on September 17th. So this would have been something before your mom died. I'm not saying it's you. I'm just asking you if it is you. Do you remember ever posting anything on the internet like that? There may not be you. No. Now, if the voice told you to buy that, and the voice told you about the AR-15, what do you think if you, if you didn't buy it, if you said, hey, I ain't buying it, has got too expensive, what do you think the voice would have done to you? Did you stop talking to you? No, tell me to hurt myself. How, how would you hurt yourself? Cut. You're a cutter? I'm a cutter. All right. I mean, what was the last time you cut yourself? Earlier. Earlier when? When I was fishing. Earlier today or earlier? Earlier today. Where were you fishing at today? At, the, at a lake. Okay. Before oh, the okay. shoot, before the school shooting? Yes. What, were you, what did you cut yourself with? A knife. Those little scratches on your arms? Let me look at them. Come on, man. I get worse scratches weeding my flower bed than that. You weren't trying to hurt yourself. Does the voice like me? He doesn't trust you. Why doesn't he trust me? I'm pretty relaxed, ain't I? I'm trying to try and figure that out, too. Well, what does he like about me? I mean, I'm, I'm kind of grinning because I want to know what, what the voice's problem is with me. What doesn't he like about me? I treated you fairly. I've given you water. I talked nice to you. You know, you're too nice. I'm too nice. Yeah. The the Xanax you were talking to me about earlier. Yeah. Where'd you get the Xanax on the street or on the streets? Did it make the the demon go away? Yeah. So if the, if the Xanax helps you get the demons away. Same marijuana does it better. And this is where Nicholas has proven that his psychosis is fake. He says marijuana helps treat his psychosis, when in reality, it can be a trigger for psychosis. Nicholas simply doesn't know the facts about the condition he's faking. And that will ultimately be what makes his case fall apart. Marijuana does better. When was the last time you smoked marijuana? Last week. Last week? If you're making $1,200 a week, why don't you smoke marijuana every day to get rid of the demon? It's illegal. It's illegal? Yeah. And it's illegal. It was illegal whether you do it once a week or once, once every five minutes. So why didn't you choose to get rid of the demon by doing it? Anytime you heard the demon, just light up a blunt. You sure you didn't like the demon's voice? I don't like the demon's voice. You sure? I'm sure. Then why didn't you go to a doctor to get rid of it? I'm just afraid. I'm just afraid people. Why, why, why? Well, forget that for a second. Let me ask you another crazy question. Okay. If the demon, was the demon there that night, Ian? Beat, beat you up on campus? Uh -huh. Was the demon there that day when Ian beat you up on campus? Yes, he told me to go up to him. Okay, so so who did Ian beat up? You were the demon? Me. Okay, so why didn't the demon do something to stop it? Why didn't it do it? Huh? Why didn't it? I don't know. That's a good question because the demons tell you to do all these bad things. Why couldn't the demon get you mad enough to get the best of Ian? I mean, I don't know. I don't know either. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Why the fuck? Why the fuck? I don't know. The, de the demons, this I don't know why all powerful thing that tells you to do bad things, and you're afraid of it. Why didn't the demon just take over right then when Ian was getting the best of you and get the best of Ian? Well, why, why, why did the demon not do that? Why do you think? I'm trying to figure it out. I don't know. I don't. I can't figure it out either because I don't think the demon exists. I, th I think. I don't think it exists. No, like. Can I, I, think, I think the dim Go ahead, go ahead but. Am I able to, like, think to myself about it? Yeah, sure. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, you can think all you want. I'm just. No, I'm just thinking about the demon. Alright. Well, you want me to leave you to think for a while and then I'll come back and talk to you? I, I personally, I think you're using the demon as an excuse. I'm not. I promise. You could stop the demon by getting a prescription for marijuana. You could stop the demon by getting a prescription for Xanax. You could stop the demon by illegally doing marijuana, which you were doing anyway. You could stop the demon by doing Xanax illegally, which you were doing anyway. 
You could have stopped the demon anytime you want. You didn't want to stop the demon. No, that's not true. That's you, you didn't. You could have. I've given you four ways you could have stopped the demon, man. Okay, and now you know you're just acting like that because. No, 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 no. no, no okay, no. well relax. You're just acting like that because I'm making no. sense. Calm down. I'm making sense, and you don't like when it makes sense. No, no, no. no. The detective points out the flaws in Nicholas's logic, stating how he could have stopped the demon in question if he wanted. As a response, Nicholas fidgets. The fidgeting is sporadic and does not seem to be his normal behavior, since Nicholas hasn't acted this way for over an hour. It's only when he feels like he needs to further prove his condition while being questioned that he behaves this way. Because it doesn't fit into the story you're telling no, right no, now. No, I'm telling you the story. It's just... It's, it's true. It's well, just, why are you looking at your arm now? I'm, not tr I'm trying to understand why. What, what, well, why didn't you want to stop the demon? I don't know. <laughs> because you, I think you like the demon. No, I don't. Why didn't you stop it then? I don't like the demon. 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 Well, that's, if, that's if the demon even exists. I get an attorney or something. You want what? An attorney? Yeah. The, the demon or the uh, the voice just tell you to get an attorney? Okay. If you need some, just yell. My desk is on the other side of the room. All right. I'm just on the other side of the wall. your hands kind of sit forward in a chair. Put your no, put your butt up this way a little bit. I would put handcuffs behind you since you keep talking about hurting yourself. All right, I did talk to Zach. He's right here. Okay, now listen up though. If you want to talk to Zach because of some of the things you said, I'm going to have to sit in the room. I'm not going to talk to you. I'm not going to ask you any, ask you any questions. But I can't leave you too alone because some of the things you said about harming yourself. Yeah. Do you want to talk to Zach? Yes. Okay, Zach, have a seat. And again, I'm not saying anything at all. So. Who do you think mom would think right now? She if she would cry. Was, she would cry. You, you, you're, people think you're a monster now. A monster? You don't have anything, you're not acting like yourself. Like, why? Like, we've. This is not who you are. Like, come on. What do you, why did you do this? This is. Don't even laugh at me. Dude, this is. I'm sorry. And we just saw a break in Nicholas's acting. Zach is pointing out the unusual way Nicholas is behaving, and Nicholas laughs at it like it's a joke. Laughing adds levity to a situation and is a common behavior for people who get caught lying as a way to help lighten their punishment. I, keep, I try to, what happened to your Instagram? I tried to text you like literally a couple of days ago because I had this bad feeling in my heart. What, what happened to your Instagram? Why did you text me? What happened to it? Why did you stop with your social media? Zach points out a damning detail. Nicholas deleted his social media and refused to talk to friends for days. Many shooters will cut off people and delete accounts before committing the act. Nicholas's entire argument depends on this being a spontaneous act where the voices in his head made him commit the shooting. Zach's account suggests that Nicholas was planning the shooting at least a few days in advance, which again puts holes in this excuse. 
People. And you mean people, dude? Is is yeah. irrele- irrelevant people? What? Who? Tell me exactly who. Who made you delete your Instagram? Who? People. What people? People. Do you I think know. this is not even a game? You're not gonna wake up and be out of here. Do you remember when we were in the hospital and I told you I had your back? Remember, my mom died. Remember, we were walking down the hallway and I told you. You don't remember. You probably don't because you just did some fucked up shit. I told you when we were walking down the hallway that it's just me and you and I had your back. All right, I know you. You probably feel like you have nobody, but I I care about you. I literally would pour my heart out for you. I know it, I make it seem like I didn't care about you at all. I know I made it seem like when we were growing up that I hated you. I didn't like you. But truth is, I just didn't want to look like I didn't want to look weak. I love you with all my heart. Like I will tell you, I'm telling you right now, I love you. All right, I know what you did today. Other people look at me like I'm crazy for even, and, and I don't I don't care what other people think. Like you're my brother. I I love you. I I want I want you to. You can't. Why are you? Can I hug him? Yeah. As long as yeah, as long as you. I mean. I'm sorry. I love you. I love you too, bro. <laughs> I know what you've gone through, though. I'm sorry. That's okay, bro. This might be the first time Nicholas Cruz has expressed his genuine emotions. And what he says is, I'm sorry. Instead of blaming his demons or the voice in his head, Nicholas gives an apology, suggesting that he acknowledges that he was the one responsible for the shooting. <laughs> I know how you grow up. I know we. I know that people don't understand you, but I understand. You. I can't remember. Yeah, I, I don't. I love you. You don't know what you want to do with your life. You didn't know what you wanted to do with your life. How? How do you not know what you want to do with your life? You talk about the army. I know. You talk about. Hmm. I think that's really it. Cruz was found to be faking his psychosis, acting completely out of his own will. After a long trial, Cruz pleaded guilty to all charges brought against him. That 17 accounts of first-degree murder and 17 accounts of attempted first-degree murder. Following his sentencing, Nicholas Cruz said he regretted his actions and asked for the families of his victims to decide what should be done with him. Cruz is currently serving a life sentence in prison where he will remain for the remainder of his life.